Hi, we, I did say on the blog that um, I'll give you a few hints and tips on how you can turn something as old and worn as this into something rather special, which you'd be rather proud to have in your own home. Um, so, welcome to uh, my little workshop at uh, Arcade Interiors. It actually isn't so small, it's 2,000 square feet where we keep all of our stock that's ready to go up to the shops, ready to be shipped around the UK and abroad, and uh, more stuff for me to work on, loads of it in fact. So this particular unit here, it is old and worn, it's oak, the top is a veneer, um, the doors and drawers are all jammed and sticky, they don't actually close properly, so we've got a lot of stuff to work on, but there's so much detail here, it lends itself to be painted and aged. Um, the top is, to be fair, very well worn. I'll uh, let you have a close-up look. So here's the top of the cabinet. As you can see, it's scratched, it's worn, it's blistered, it's got deep grooves in the solid pieces of oak here, and generally in pretty bad state. Now normally, when I distress or age a unit, I don't really distress the top. If it's in good condition, I like to keep it in that way. Um, for the simple reason that, like this unit, it's 50 or 60 years old. I'm going to give it a makeover now that will make it good for the next 50 or 60 years. And somebody afterwards can make it over again and it will go on again. If we distress the top too badly on a normal unit, well then, once the person who, uh, who has bought it has finished use, using it, then it's not really going to be able to be made good again without renewing the wood. Um, and as we're in the green business of, of trying to keep things that we've already got in use, and not cutting down more trees to, to make more furniture, which is really unnecessary, I really don't see the point. But however, this top is damaged, so um, if I can't make it good, which it looks a bit too far gone for that, we'll distress it in a nice mild way that will give it age, that will give it character, but it will not destroy it. But first of all, we've got to do a fair bit of sanding uh, and get this prepared for painting. So off we go. We need our mask. We need our sander, so catch you later when I finish. basically at that for the time being. I'll get the unit stripped, ready for painting. Um, I've just sort of had a look around the workshop and found the top that fits it quite nicely. So we're going to add a plate back to it. I think it's going to look quite nice unit. Um, about the top, it's got a few scratches, a few cuts, a few digs. So I will be adding a little bit more to that distress. I don't normally, as I previously said, but there's enough in this for me to say, well, you know, it will do. Um, the veneer is raised, so what I'm going to do, this piece here at the front, I'm going to actually take the painting right up to the raised piece of veneer, all the way around. The veneer then will stay as it is, I'll darken it slightly, um, I'll make the, um, all the imperfections stand out a little bit more, and then we'll finish it off with a glaze. So we'll, um, an oil of some sort. Right, all that's left now is for me to prepare it, take all the drawers, the hinges, everything off, all the doors, fix the doors first, get it painted. So when I've done that part, I'm ready for painting. We'll switch the camera back on and we'll show you how we do that. Okay, that's the cabinet now fully ready. We've um, wirewalled it all back, given it a good wash out, good clean absolutely free of dust, washed it underneath as well, because obviously this is going to go into somebody's house, we don't want to go 
giving them spiders' webs and spiders and dirty things that normally get trapped underneath. Um, at the point of no, we've cleaned out everything absolutely perfectly clean. That will take paint, that will come up as we expect it to. Um, good point to always watch for if you're doing this for yourself is when we do doors, doors basically have just a few coats of varnish and it's very thin. So when we want to put what's going to be four coats of paint on it and two more coats of varnish, we're actually adding a lot of thickness to the to this door, making it bigger. So when we sand it back, we actually take a good bit off. All right, now then, we're ready to go painting. Let me explain a little bit of what we're going to do here. We're going to primer it, undercoat it in quite a dark colour. Um, and it's quite a garish colour, it's pink. And the reason being, the colour that's going on it is much lighter. It's Harlan Ball Archive. When we finish it, we want just a little bit of that pink to come through when we start distressing the cabinet. We're going to glaze the cabinet on top, so in actual fact you're going to end up with three colours. Um, we're going to start with uh, spray in the back, and you'll be able to see the cabinet much better once it's finished.
two top coats but uh, we did say we've got to age it and distress it so hopefully I'll be able to show you the, the doors fairly close up and we'll work on the doors see what we can do here tools I need for this, a wet rag just to give it a wipe over, my colouring cloth, a brush and my designing brush. So first of all, give it the top a good damp down everywhere where you want it to go. using a good dry brush and here we have the uh, finished product it's I say finished I've still got to do the top but uh, the paintings finished for now and as you can see we've aged it nicely um, we've given it some mild distress Run by the hand over so that. and then again on the plate rack a couple of scratches here and there So from one tired old cabinet to something with a new list.